Some of the world's oldest existing constructions can actually be found here on the southwesterly coast of the island of Malta. Those are the Khajar Qim and the Menaidra temples. Both temple complexes are listed as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Their main structures can be traced back to 3600 to 3200 BC. The largest megaliths are 5.2 meters high and weigh 20 tons. The Khajar Qim complex actually consists of a main temple and several other temples besides it the most primitive of which is believed to possibly date before 3600 BC. The main temple consists of several semicircular rooms known as apses. Though it was first excavated in 1839, it wasn't until 2009 when special shelters were constructed to protect both temples from the elements. After walking downhill for about 500 meters, you will reach the second temple complex, the Manaidra, which shares a similar architectural design to that of Khajar Qim. The Menaidra temple complex consists of three buildings. One of the niches in the Menaidra even made it to the imprints of the Maltese Eurocent coins. In 2001, Menaidra was badly damaged by vandals who broke about 60 megaliths and carved graffiti on them. Fortunately, Menaidra could be restored and was reopened to the public in 2002. Adjacent to the temples, you will find a small museum where replicas of decorated pillars and obese statues that used to be in the temples are exhibited. Today, the original relics that were discovered in these temple complexes can be viewed in the Museum of Archaeology in Valletta. So we're standing right now in the old city of Rabat, which is adjacent to the ancient city of Medina. And right now we're about to go to St. Paul's Grotto and also the catacombs, which uh, according to the sign behind me is the largest catacomb complex in all of Malta. The catacombs were built by the Romans in the 3rd century BC, but the site may actually date back to the Phoenician Punic period, where it was used as a cemetery. The catacombs themselves were later used by early Christians to meet in secret and celebrate mass, and then later to bury their dead. Evidence seems to indicate that Jews and pagans may have also been indiscriminately buried besides the Christians in these catacombs. You know, it's kind of amazing to think that this place once housed the remains of people whose bodies came over here to be interred as their final resting place. The catacombs may have been in use up until the 8th century and then again after the ejection of Moorish control in the 13th century. This labyrinth of catacombs, I must say, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty spooky when you're here even as a pair, let alone by yourself. They were also used as a shelter to protect local inhabitants during World War II. A grotto dedicated to St. Paul can be found adjacent to the entrance of the catacombs. It is said that St. Paul stayed in this grotto for three months following his shipwreck on Malta in 60 AD. So we're now outside the gate of the ancient city of Emdina, which once served as the capital of Malta in antiquity. Imdina was founded by Phoenician settlers in the 8th century BC and was given the name Malith. It became known as Melite during the Roman period and Medina during the Arab occupation, and it lost its importance as the capital city in the 16th century following the arrival of the Order of St. John, which re-established the island's capital in Birgu. Nevertheless, the city remained the core of the Maltese nobility and the Catholic Church. Also known as the Silent and the Noble City, today the fortified and confined city of Imdina, complete with its surrounding walls, beautiful narrow alleyways and grand architecture, is one of the main tourist attractions in Malta. Today, only a bit more than 200 people live in the actual city itself, compared to that of Rabat next door with a population of 11,000. A number of traditional cafes, snack bars and restaurants can be found within the city walls, and they're wonderful venues for capturing and appreciating the ambience of an ancient Mediterranean culture, like this one, the Don Mesquita. I think it's actually quite nice that within the city walls, uh, you find a number of these cafes that serve traditional Maltese cuisine, so um, like what we've done now is actually ordered a, a Maltese platter for two to see what that consists of. A 
And if you enjoy desserts and stunning views, check out the Fontanella Tea Garden, where you can select from a wide variety of cakes and observe a panorama of Malta from their terrace. Finally, on our way back from Emdina, we also decided to make one last stop to visit the Mostar Dome. So a little interesting fact about the Mostar Dome behind me. Apparently it holds the third largest rotunda dome in the world. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel.